Hello future viewers watching the replay. This is a bit of an impromptu stream. Not really, I'm just uh, not bothering sending out any Twitter or Facebook messages. Just gonna jump straight into it and see if anybody shows up. Uh, and the reason being it's not gonna be a super exciting stream. I lied, you should definitely watch the whole video. In fact, it is probably very interesting. Just depends if you find the, the topic interesting, because what we're doing today is I'm designing our next battle map, um, the uh, general layout, and hopefully coming up with some fun elements to make gameplay on it more than just a everybody meets in the middle and jukes it out kind of deal. So the theme I've chosen, I've decided since I have two more maps to draw this month and our last map was a jungle temple, let's just do a trio of elemental temples. And if the keen viewer may have noticed my file name over here, this one's going to be the ice temple. So besides that name, I've come up with nothing, nothing else. So um, we're going to dive in and see where it takes us. I think I'm actually going to rotate this whole canvas. Like so. And kind of work vertically. Now I, I know I want a gate here. And I just realized the, the sort of image I have in my head is like Elsa's castle from Frozen. Um, we're, we're just doing a temple entrance, so it's not going to be super duper technical. But this is where the gate's going to be. Roughly. We might change it later. I'm thinking a peaked gate like this. Our jungle temple had a round gate, like a round stone that would roll away. And then I want these other two temples to have something else distinct. So a gate like this kind of evokes, this is why I was thinking of Elsa's temple, because it kind of evokes a snowflake. And perhaps we can follow this pattern into yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's kind of coming to me now. We can go with a snowflake kind of shape as our guide uh, with the, the floor platform, the mosaic of the floor. Not so much the mosaic, but the uh, just the shape of the path, the cobbled area, I guess. So, door will... Uh, Oh, I just had another idea. The door will contribute to that. And then... So will... The floor space. I must warn you all, it's still 11 a.m. Oh, it's almost 12, okay. Well, I haven't had my coffee yet, so things are gonna come out of my mouth a little bit strangely. So we're going to have use our grid, our uh, square grid. We're going to follow it rather faithfully just for, so we don't confuse the grid when it's actually on the table. And this is why we draft, because if I just sat down and started drawing this, I don't think I would have dared try a snowflake shape without having all of my digital tools, the grid and such handy. And of course, this is why I invited you all so that you can help me come up with even better ideas. So if you have any, um, anything you think would make a nice addition to this map, Please let me know and we'll think it through. This is just a draft, like I said, so excuse the messy lines. 
Yeah, in fact, we're going to move that down another square. I hope my audio is fine. I think the music might be a bit loud. Let me turn that down a bit. But the audio levels for my voice looks okay, if a bit loud. I'm not trying to be too loud. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. That looks pretty good. Sorry to make you all adjust your headsets. Okay, I do want a rather straight line. Because when it comes time to inking, it's very hard to leave the safety of these lines that I've placed in the drafting. So if I can get these right, then it makes my job later on super duper easy. Speaking of the inking, that's going to happen later today, I believe, if all goes well. Touch wood and all that. Well, I think we've succeeded in communicating that this is an ice temple, just with this stuff. And then, of course, we're going to throw down a bunch of snow surrounding the place. So this here is our gate. So there'll be some kind of wall coming out here. Maybe I could afford to zoom in a bit. We're a bit far away, aren't we? Going with some rather dramatic shifted perspective on these temples so that we can get the door as an element on the map. I think it's important to see the door just uh, just as an atmospheric set piece. Please excuse my chair. It, it always starts off groaning like this and then later on it seems to quiet down. Maybe I settle in I guess. That will be our door area. Get a triangle there, and then I want a platform above. This was my original idea, and we may, I may change my mind later, but this is my vague plan: is to have some sort of some sort of platform up here, just like uh, where. Perhaps the priest would stand and address the crowds gathering here. Not sure what kind of temple this is, thematically speaking. But and then what would be the best way to do a diagonal staircase? Across like this. Or we can follow the grid more precisely. I know there's certain dungeon masters which will curse me for putting anything diagonal on their maps. Or we can kind of follow the grid like this and get the bulk of the grid square. I think that's the way to go. So let's have this platform come out here. And then it's going to follow this. I guess it's going to be more about there. Hey, Wish Ghost and Ken Vore. Oh, thanks for saying so. Yeah, I was quite very happy with how the Jungle Temple came out. Uh, the theme to this one is ice. So, um, we're gonna blanket the whole thing in snow, and in addition to that, we're trying to mix in some icicle type imagery. So, this will be like a platform, a paved area, maybe even a 
like a raised platform. Not entirely sure. We've got all this space to work with. Maybe I'll try that out. And we'll go hard into the shifted perspective stuff. Yeah, what I'm saying probably doesn't make a lick of sense, but just trust me for now. So let's draw. Okay, well, what I can do is get a more vague color here. Let's go with bright orange. Sure, why not? And get a big old brush. And then here we can block in kind of our walkable area. I'm imagining this is a platform and it's kind of set on a mountainside. And I just realized I've got that issue again where my brush isn't rotating. Super annoying, but uh, I don't need that functionality at this point. So I'm just going to live with it. Uh, that's not traversable because that's our door. This is. Probably out to like here. This staircase will come down. Probably join up there. So we're just planning out our traversable terrain. This is kind of where the battle will take place, unless you got players who can fly, I suppose. And then the whole thing is their playground. I need to keep things more loose. I don't want to spend more than 40 minutes on this draft, so let's, let's keep things moving. Probably like a double staircase coming up. Maybe here and here. And then it'll go... Well, if we put it there, it might stuff up our fun design like here this isn't too close to the edge of the canvas and it'll go down and i think we want it to go diagonal too Trying to get some interesting shapes happening at this point. None of it's set in stone. That gives these like a maybe a three, maybe they're three squares tall, sort of. And this will be here. And we'll have a little nook in there. I hope this will make sense soon enough, if you haven't figured it out already. Hey, Open Hodge, welcome back. Interesting color scheme I picked here, isn't it? Kind of looks like a flower temple, tentatively. But I feel like these hard shapes will also kind of speak of ice. Pretty tall, huh? So this will be raised up platform and all of this will be um, wall, intraversible wall. So you can see how violently we've shifted the perspective. And I kind of want to take this platform higher. We're going to do that. Maybe just so we can have a grander gate. Kind of broken my rule there. Let's try that again. I'm going to shift the whole thing down too so that there's more space up here. Probably. It's just going to be stone, then I won't bother. Yeah, this one.
This gives us lots of space to get fancy with our ice stuff. With our icy themed gate. And I'm picturing like jet black stone broken up by uh, shining white ice. Maybe we could do this sort of shape up here. I do want a decent amount of space. I don't like, uh, I don't think anybody really likes squeezing down five foot corridors slash walkways. Need some breathing room. High school colors. Oh, yeah. I think that it does remind me of like sports team, a sports team of some sort. Yeah, the small walkways are interesting for, like, tactically interesting. Used sparingly, I think. Um, so we're kind of mixing up large battlefields with small walkways. And then I like, we'll have two pathways here, so there's uh, more than one option. More than one option is always good. Then I want another platform down here, and then a platform leading, not a platform, a walkway leading off the map. So, we can keep our. Well, we, maybe we can do another icy something with this shape. Kind of using this little window more than I'm using this one to get the shapes right. So this needs to come up a bit. Fence. It's kind of like your classic RPG perspective, as in video games, not Dungeons and Dragons. We could mix other little snowflakes into the floor patterning, but I think the platform itself will be more generic. And perhaps we should start with our kind of entryway. Or perhaps this should be like the base of the cliff. And then this opens out into a big snowy expanse. I think that's the way to go. And then our cliff starts here and goes up. It's, it's built into like a sheer cliff of black stone. That's kind of what I'm thinking of. We don't have to color all that in. In fact, just using you as a guide, we'll come back here. Okay, so this we don't want anymore. None of this is getting printed except for this line art layout that I'm uh, drawing in now. And then I'll use that as a guide for inking over all the details with a, a real life pen. I'm going to come back to this gate and do something fun with all these shapes. I just realized this one's taller than the rest. That's odd. 
should be like this. So I wonder if this large area should be like carved from the stone or be like a construction. And these here will be stairs. Then we'll <clears throat> well, if they've got to get 15 feet up, potentially that's 15 feet. I guess it depends on the perspective. Like how many stair tiles would be appropriate for this distance? I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, for my stair tiles, I just, uh, I just outline the edge of the tiles. And then when I actually ink this in, I'll put the individual stairs in. This is just a guide layer after all. I don't want to get caught up in the details. And this is also the same distance as this, so... Is it? I guess at the very top it is. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. What I will do is have two style, two styles, two tiles of stairs here. And then one here after the elbow. leading up to this platform. And then this, this also helps people determine which tile they're actually standing on when the grid's overlaid. Uh, because we're breaking this up and there'll be stairs here, this distinctly a tile and then this is distinctly a tile and this one too. And these other ones are kind of excluded. So that's why I've been at least a little bit careful with where I put my diagonal shapes in. And then I suppose at the bottom here, to decide whether these stairways are cut into the cliffside or if they're built out from the cliffside. If they're built out from, then the cliff will be somewhere here. But if they're cut into, it'll be somewhere, I guess it'll be out here somewhere. Yeah, I think we'll go built out from, and then I can Toss some rubble and fun stuff in here and give this whole sh cliff face kind of a, a rounded look. So that'll be like a natural wall and then we can do all of our fun cliff stuff out here. That'll be a Alvin Hodge asks what low-cost printer I would recommend. Uh, sorry, I, I don't have any recommendations. I'm actually horribly 
experienced with printers. Um, I bought quite a, a high-end one so that I could print out A3 maps and stuff. It's like a business expense for me, so I just went with a good one. But as far as the budget range, I couldn't tell you, sorry. Uh, Ken Vore, you can find me at at 2 minute tabletop. Just one word. <laughs> this here will kind of be coming out. I think my perspective skills are fueled by coffee, and I'm at an, I'm running empty on coffee. But uh, I'm hastily erasing this because I'm thinking going off something like Okami Goddess's idea. I'm going to have one side retreating into the distance, and one side. Um, the other way. Excuse me, I'm very distracted. This music's a bit overpowering. Next, please. Yeah. Okay. Where were we? So let me let me try and say that again in a way that makes sense. So basically, I want this cliff. Like the mountain side is running diagonal. So this side will come out and this side will retreat in. And then we can do some more fun stuff with the shadows that way. Maybe have, yeah, we can do some fun stuff. And then these stairways get to be cut into the rock rather than built out from the rock. It's probably a mixture. But if we think in like large vertical shapes, this, this stairway should probably be running here. That'd make much more sense. Hey, G the monkey. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, um, uh, I don't usually stream so early in the day, but things seem to have worked out today. Here we are. Trying to get an early start so I can get everything done. What do I think? Should we have it just go straight up? I do like diagonal shapes, but... Then we can make this gate more symmetrical if we go straight up. Like so. Use them in the programs you run at the library. That's interesting. Oh, hey, Sarah. Uh, just finished watching the temple coloring. I'm glad you're learning something. I, I do try and narrate what I'm doing and thinking. It doesn't always come out in a way that makes sense, but I'm sure I'll learn the skill as we go on. Kind of thinking we might get rid of this uppermost platform just have our major platform and then have some sort of interesting terrain out the front it'll also cut down on the amount of rocks that need to be drawn i don't like uh having too much rocks on the map because it's or like sheer cliff face i mean 
Because it's it's not useful to the party, they can't traverse it. So uh, let, let's try this. Let's get rid of these this bit. And shift the whole thing. Oh, excuse me. That's the wrong color. And shift the whole thing upwards. What about there? So we still got plenty of space for a fancy gate. And then we've also got plenty of space down here for fights. I imagine maybe the priest is still here. Maybe he's undead or a lich or something and he's defending the gate. And he's standing up here, 15 or 30 feet up, whatever you decide. Raining down ice spells on the party as they're fighting something else down here. Yeah, that sounds fun. It helps to come up with kind of theoretical encounters as you're drawing, because then I could think, oh well, our priest lich guy could probably use such and such up here. Let me give him another platform or a uh, some cover to hide behind something like that or if we decided it was frost goblins instead then we might scatter some camping supplies up here inevitably this is going to be highly inspired by skyrim i think that's i think i'm subconsciously imagining a dragon priest up here yes that's that's the head cannon now dragon priest Okay, well, I'm going to ask all of you, chat, what do you think should go in this large area down here? It's going to be a very snowy map, so there's going to be lots of snow. Should we just have, like, uh, like a gathering area for people who come to this temple? Like a, a pathway and a campsite here with a tent here kind of deal? And then the rest is snowy, or should it be forested? Or, like, or what kind of Skyrim place am I imagining? That's that's the real question. But, yeah, please do. Frozen little pond. Ooh, like a slippy, slidey lake. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Maybe all of this is ice, and this cliffside... That's, that's a... I like where we're going with this. So this is, this cliffside is so sheer because it disappears beneath the uh, the water. The water that's now frozen and all of this is slippy slidey terrain, except perhaps for a few islands of snow clumps. And then we can have like a set piece, like a shipwrecked boat jutting out somewhere, or like a scattering of abandoned rowing boats. Hmm? I like that. I suppose if this place uh, exists in such a place, then it would have some appearance of a jetty or a little landing. So let's think about that. It's probably, probably diagonal. Probably diagonal. Love those diagonal shapes. Just to make it hard for DMs. I know from experience, you throw some diagonals into your battle map and every turn it's like, can I stand here? Can I walk this way? But I'll just be mindful. Like here, it's quite obvious. You can stand here and here. These are question marks and the DM can just say either you can or you can't stand on half tiles and it Hopefully just has to say it once. So we do have stairs on either side. So I guess a big old platform is appropriate. Here. Yeah. yeah, so I guess in these winter months, people can just walk across the lake to visit here, but I'm sure somebody's left their rowing boat here um, and it's frozen in.
Dragon frozen in the lake? Damn. Um, land curse to eternal winter. Now I'm I'm kind of thinking along the frozen lake idea, especially if something's going to come up from beneath, which might become a running theme with these temples, since that was the idea with the sinkhole, a big crack in the frozen lake, and then something, perhaps something just barely visible down at the bottom. But now what I'm thinking is, uh. This stony platform, this will be like an ancient structure, and then we'll mix it up at the bottom with some scrappy little jetties that people have built. Like a little, like a little jetty here. And then something asymmetrical on the other side. Right here. Oh, they're coming out the same amount that won't do. <clears throat> Frozen in rowboat here. How long is a rowboat? I ask myself that every time. I usually just go with almost 10 feet. I mean, under dragon thing. I don't, I, I don't necessarily want a specific encounter for this map, but I want to leave it open-ended for DMs to come up with whatever they want. But, um, but as, as a tool for making an interesting battle map, it's fun to have something in mind. So I, I think I usually stay away from dragons because that's like a high level encounter that not a lot of people, not very accessible for a lot of parties. Uh, like a big frozen dead dragon skeleton, that would be appropriate. About 10 feet, good to know, thanks. I've been asking myself that question a long time. But here's a vague shape of a rowing boat, which I'll fill in later on. Uh, they're probably tied up to this pole. Just another one here for our rule of threes. And then I feel like at the base of the mountain, there'd be like a bunch of snow gathering here. It's like a, it's like a, a ring of snow. And then all this will be our difficult terrain stuff. So this snow should vaguely follow battle map, other uh, grid. And a big brush. Somehow my brush has fixed itself and it's rotating again. So odd. We still have plenty of difficult terrain. Maybe we should proceed that snow back a bit. To here. I guess this is where the, the snow gathers when the wind blows it across the lake and then it meets the mountain and it has to stop. Something like this. <clears throat> it's like a little clump here for composition's sake. Gelatinous ice cube. That's hilarious. 
Vague shape of a dragon. Yeah, maybe just like the blurry suggestion of a dragon beneath the ice. Now, the question I was going to ask myself was if we want to also break this up, like literally break it up with a big chasm in the ice. Maybe, maybe if that chasm originates from the temple, that would be like a fun plot point. And then we can also mix in a bunch of perspective like that. That looks pretty cool. The uh, issue I see with it is that we deliberately put two paths here so that the players aren't forced down one avenue. They have options open to them. Chasm. Then again, if we keep a thin chasm, like five feet, that, that can be jumped by anyone with a run-up. Although it is a slippery surface, so maybe, maybe they'll still have to make a fun check. Make an ice skating check to jump the deadly chasm. What do you mean your character's not proficient in ice skating? This is fun. I like this. One of these days, I, I think I'll have to try drawing a map with this brush because I get a lot of fun line shapes just by going back and forth with the eraser and the paintbrush. That's the method I use to draw tokens, so... Uh, it, the downside is it traps me into fiddling a lot more because I can undo and redo things an infinite number of times. And the other option is we say somebody has been here before the players and they've built little wooden bridges across. Or maybe, maybe we can use a boat. One of our abandoned rowboats. Maybe this one, because he, he's a bit too close to the edge of the canvas. Maybe a boat is like partially bridging this gap right in the middle. That's an interesting dynamic, I think. That's a... Very disgusting boat. Okay, that's a boat-ish shape. So we can have kind of threats on both sides, like range threats on both sides of the crevice. So that the party, uh, I like to lure my party into splitting up. They're still on the same map, but they're taking different avenues at the same time. Um, so in my mind, we're luring one portion of the party up the right hand side and the other up the left hand side with different enemies that could threaten them from either side. And then we'll have like a, I guess the big finale here when the party meet up. Uh, but this down here, I like this. We'll just have a bunch of ice and like a smattering of snow, like maybe some snow here. Mixing in some snow for, like I said before, the composition, sake of the composition. So it's not just one big area of samey, samey, samey stuff. And then we have our little scrappy jetties with maybe like a barrel or something there. I don't know why people would build a jetty here. Perhaps it's like a convenient place to fish. Or maybe there's a little path that leads off here that goes to the lighthouse or other structure of importance further up the cliff. Whereas the temple entrance is just kind of an ancient ruin nobody gives a damn about. And it also gives, if we have that path here, this is another thing I like to add to my maps, it also gives an avenue for the DM to bring in reinforcements if the 
players are wiping the floor with the enemies you put on the battle map. It's nice to have a way to bring in more. So I guess I'll go this way since this is the slope of our mountain. Need a smaller brush again. This one's just a little bit too meaty. <clears throat> Excuse my chair. This is all a natural cliff face. Hey, Owen Eli. Welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm up streaming especially early i usually stream in the night time when the sun's gone down and the webcam has horrible exposure but uh i am getting an early start today so it's it's nice seeing some new faces and we are we're drawing an ice temple i'm not sure if my setting on streamlabs worked in that it's supposed to name these streams the appropriate thing but we're drawing an ice temple today <laughs> the oldest face in a sense yes you are you're consistently at the top of the patreon credits um my oldest supporter seriously big thanks i wish i could shake your hand in person because You've um, contributed a significant amount. Thank you, Owen. Um, so I'm happy down here. We'll kind of ruffle up this surface down here with some snow banks. Won't be so precise. Of course, no battle map needs any safety railing. Uh, the question is, do we want... Do we want cover for our potential enemies up here? I think the purpose of this map being a temple is more of like a speaking platform, so it doesn't make sense to have battlements at the top. I think it's just going to be sheer and open, and I think it's just going to have these hard edges. It's kind of kind of speaks to the character of an ice temple to have hard carved edges with sleek surfaces. Maybe this is made of iron? No, it's a bit too derivative. So I'm pretty happy up here. I haven't quite figured out what kind of cobblestone we're going to use up here. Perhaps it's just carved rock. I think carved rock makes a lot of sense. Whereas this will be like a cobblestone mosaic. Be a little more definitive about where the grid is. When I start drawing this. And then the last order of business is giving this gate some character. I'm glad to hear it yeah I'm always so glad to hear that people are using my stuff in sessions because um, I know only the minority of people take photographs and the minority minority of that minority will send me photographs so it's only very rarely that I actually see people around a table using my stuff but uh so it's hard to believe sometimes that so many people are getting so much use out of these so I hope you all have space for an icy temple somewhere in your world. Because I think this one will be some fun. I'm just vaguely figuring out where... How this clip's going to work. Because it's easier now than to do it with ink that I can't erase if I were to screw up. So what I... I think this corner is like cut into the rock, so it's going to have like a, quite a distinct shape, kind of like that, maybe. I 
Still a little bit clumsy in Photoshop. I've rather recently changed my key bindings. My brain's still catching up. Well, it just means I need more tokens, doesn't it? I don't know, Eli, if you saw the uh, the monster tokens we've been working on, but that's that's twenty ocean themed monster tokens coming soon. So the fun thing about choosing a diagonal mountain face, cliff face, is that we can have all these nice vertical lines diagonal, which is much more dynamic, much more interesting to look at. So I'm actually going to improve the number of diagonal lines I'm going to work with. I've been trying to be more sparing too with my rocky lines. I think I had uh, one criticism with the rock with the jungle temple. It's that my rock faces were just a bit noisy, a bit too detailed. I'm quite enjoying this. I said we'd get to the gate, but first, I guess we're going to define a mountain side. Like here, we can have a bit of a swoop going up. <clears throat> a bit of a ridge there. Not a ridge, but like a lip. Yeah, I, I've heard a lot of people mention HP printers, so they can't go too wrong. You can't go too wrong with a HP printer, I guess. Um, don't tell anyone, but personally, I only use the line only maps during my game. And any printer in the world can print the line only stuff that's just black and white. But if you want the full color, fancy stuff, hmm, yeah, I'm not sure. Surely there's something will come up if you Google like budget poster printer. And I want like, uh, like these cliffs wouldn't last forever. There'd be a scattering of rubble at the bottom. Can we make that an interesting shape? I like that. Yeah, so the maps, they print best on an A2 sheet of paper, but they also print on four separate sheets of regular paper. Regular being the US letter size if you're in the US and A4 if you're just about anywhere else. And then 99% of my maps will have PDFs for both versions or both paper sizes. And if they only have one version, it means it's for the US letter because US letter is slightly smaller than A4. So you can still print US letter on A4. So. We've got everyone covered. I guess the scattering of rocks come out here. Let me imagine a little bit of overlap here. Okay. Yeah, definitely a good idea to draft my rocks digitally. Uh, 
Which movie is that, Okami Goddess? Because I'm pretty sure, like, sometimes when I'm drawing a map, I get I get the feeling that I'm accidentally copying something that I've seen earlier in my life. Is it like Journey to the Center of the Earth? Road to El Dorado. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I knew from the start that uh, I was like doing a Mayan, Mayan, Aztec kind of style map. So that means mission accomplished, if it reminds you of that movie. Uh, um, I was imagining, I think it's called Journey to the Center of the Earth. And uh, there's a sequence in it where they encounter lizard people uh, in like a, a Mayan themed shrine. <clears throat> and like that that shrine had like circular artistic elements to it so that's that's what came to my mind yeah exactly i don't worry too much about stealing too much usually i'm only wary of it if i'm stealing something that's kind of um immensely popular at the time like i haven't said it out loud but right now i'm trying to steer clear of giant ice wall from popular show that people have seen. Um, but I, I have a method of stealing, which is basically take the general idea or take an element of the idea that I like and then draft with it, draft with that idea until you have something unique. Um, I've stolen, in air quotes, a lot of content from like the Witcher series and God of War and Divinity 2. Basically, when I see a location that I like, usually I either like the atmosphere or the color or the layout. And then I just pluck that element that I like out and I'll draw a map using it. And then maybe I'll completely change the atmosphere and the color and keep the layout. Mm -hmm. But in doing so, you come up with something completely original. You've just been inspired. I think inspired by is the correct term. <clears throat> inspired by that element, that creativity. Whereas, I think, I think copying only becomes uh, a bad thing if you're literally opening up someone else's stuff and like copying it precisely. Oh, I'm getting a phone call, guys. I'll be right back in one second.
Oh, good night, Auburn Hodge. I probably missed you, but nighty night. Yeah, I'm I'm back now, but I probably just got five to ten more minutes of work. Really, all we have to play with now, we've got the layout. I'm happy with the layout. All the perspective makes sense. Might just jut this cliff out a bit more. Uh, we just have to do something interesting with this doorway, the gate. I think we're going to make it taller to begin with. More, like I said at the start of the stream, make it more like Elsa's castle. Tall and triangular. And then I'm going to take a lunch break and I'll come back in... Uh, I'll come back in an hour or so and with the overhead cam, the hand cam, and I'll draw this thing with a real pen and paper. So how do I feel about this, this shape here? Not, not great, especially here. It doesn't make much sense. Excuse me. So first of all, let's make this taller. Oops, I keep doing that. Since our perspective is so shifted dramatically, we can get away with a tall door like this. I like these shifted perspective maps. I should do them much more often. The strict top-down stuff. Um, there's a lot of purists, I think. I, I sometimes get a little criticism when I do shift to perspective stuff. I think there's such a thing as a battle map purist who only likes top down, strictly top down stuff. It makes sense because if they're using assets which are strictly top down, then those assets are become incompatible with this shift of perspective stuff. Especially when I myself am putting out a bunch of assets that are strictly top down. So it, it makes some sense. I understand it. But on the other hand, this stuff's so much fun, and I'm not going to stop doing it, so. I guess why don't we have snow up here? Like, it makes sense to have like a bundle of snow this will help transition our mountain path and our stony platform if we have snowbank here i don't think snowbank is the right terminology is it? we literally never get snow where i live so i've never had to learn the terminology behind snow but we'll have some snow lumps i'm going to call them snow bumps we have some snow bumps here. I have to decide, is this snowflake design a raised platform? Is there going to be some space here? Because if so, that would have some snow gathering in here, which I kind of like. Let's have that. Throw some snow. It's just like a light smattering of snow over here. And then there's some magical element to this platform that keeps the snow off of it. But there'll be snow here at the base of the rubble. Maybe there's a clump there. And then I think we'll keep it off of the stairs. But see how quickly I've become distracted. We're uh, not working on the gate right now. Something like this. Then we can fill these holes into. 
That's uh, that's about as much snow as we need. Like in my mind, uh, this is a frigid area, but also a dry area, so not much snow, but uh, but plenty of ice. It's frozen the lake, for example. Maybe that doesn't make a lick of sense, but also I think this will be kind of um, jutting out from the mountainside. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Fakayun. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, all of these maps which we work on on stream, with the possible exception of the lava texture, will make it onto my store uh, for free, 100% Patreon funded. Though you are welcome to leave a tip. Um, such as the jungle temple one we've been working on. That's actually on my agenda for today. I'm going to get that on the store. It's currently on Patreon. You can download it there. And it's not locked behind any paywalls. So even if you're not a patron, you can grab it. Uh, but it will be on the store later today also. So this design of the door, I think we're just going to go with some tall triangles and call it a day. Maybe this is a pillar. Some pillars on either side. How do we feel about this? Oh, and thanks to my girlfriend, we have coffee now. Yippee! <laughs> That's probably my Australian accent. Fuck Ayun. Am I gonna get flagged now? It sounded really aggressive. I should <laughs> I should be more mindful of my uh, my rating. I was trying to pronounce it, it looks vaguely like uh, Japanese, so I kind of apply it as small Japanese pronunciation, I guess. Ba Kai Yun. Okay, so this door, this door. What am I thinking about this door? We have some shapes in here, like vague machinery. Maybe we need like a, ooh, maybe like a design of an eye or something up here. What do we think of an eyeball? We haven't got anything else suggesting an eye on this map, but I feel like some little We've got all this space, we could fit something fun in there. Mandarin actually, okay. I am not, I'm completely ignorant at uh, Mandarin pronunciation, so I'm just going to stick with my cuss word Australian pronunciation. Um, or we could have another Old Faithful triangle like this don't really dig it should we have like a rounded top because uh, we're going with sharp angles on the rest of the map let's keep the sharp angle theme going but let's fuss some more Please, viewers, suggest what kind of symbol would be appropriate for this ice temple. Like, uh, an icicle would be a tad too complex for the space. 
So we're going to stay steer clear of an icicle. We have a, a snowman. This is the ancient snowman temple. Eyeball, eyeball's cool. Get point, get it gets points for being cool, but it's also kind of unjustified. I feel like if we're gonna have an eyeball temple, we need to go pedal to the metal. Eyeballs here, there, and everywhere. I think we're just gonna go with vague geometric shapes here. Let's follow the design. Yeah, maybe a crystal shape. Well, in our head cannon, in our theoretical encounter with the Lich, like, I guess the, this is kind of reminding me of the Fortress of Solitude now. Um, what, what is, what is the purpose of this temple? What's, what's inside? What's it guarding? What? What's going on inside? Kind of thinking just a simple pattern kind of like a, a little a little swirl like a, like a water dry pattern what do we think of this kind of like it so that'll be carved into the stone and this is kind of like a is this raised or recessed? I'm not, I haven't decided. Or perhaps it's just a bit too much. Not even sure if we want this diagonal. I think we're going to be like very deliberately simple with this temple. Like it's just, it's the kind of complexity is in the fact that it's cut very cleanly from the rock face. Not that it's um, got too many interesting elements to it. But I'm just kind of road testing a few shapes and seeing what I feel like. Like that, that kind of works. You know what we might also have is a little pedestal here. I like general purpose pedestals because then the DM can rule that whatever MacGuffin the party's been after in their campaign. This is where they put it, and it's drawn on the map, so you know he had it planned the whole time. Even though you probably just made that up the week before the session. A little general purpose pedestal, but because we're going with angular shapes, it's going to be a sideways square like this. Otherwise known as a diamond, I guess. You could even have... I did kind of want to get more complex with our shapes here, so maybe we can do something fun here. Although, we may also go with the cut carved stone look, so maybe 
don't want to be too crazy. And also this kind of makes it look more like a flower, which I'm trying to steer away from. I want it to look like an icicle, damn it. Uh, not an icicle, a snowflake. It's not a flower. Maybe I could get away with carving this up. Bear with me. Just do this very rough first time. Well, that by itself looks great. It's almost like a, a carpeted walkway kind of look. Like a red carpet. Which lends to the kind of regal temple. Maybe this is a tomb instead of a temple. And they like buried a king here or something. Or like an ice pharaoh. Ice pharaoh. That's that's a cool theme for a lich, isn't it? Just make it Egypt, but in the icy lands. And what I was originally thinking is to also branch this out this way. What do we think of this? No, I like just that vertical stripe. But then we should probably put our pedestal over here then. <clears throat> Here's our pedestal now. So we've still got a pedestal. We could potentially have a bunch of pedestals. Like, how many MacGuffins do you need? A pedestal on each arm of the snowflake? What do we think? Frozen tomb. Yeah, I, I do like the frozen tomb idea. And then perhaps he also had his priests embalmed too. And those are the, the kind of dragon priest ripoff defenders of the tomb. Oh, we've done it again. So a bunch of dramatically different spell casters. Like the first of which is tasked with defending the entrance and minding the altar. And then further inside this, there's more and more. Or well, perhaps some treasure hunters slash reckless adventurers, such as your party, like recently delved into this place against against the local laws and they awakened something and when they awakened it it caused this great chasm to open in the lake and the, the ancient lighthouse at the top of the cliff also blazed to life actually I have a lighthouse map you could use for that and now your adventurers which are much more responsible than those adventurers are tasked with going in and putting to rest whatever was awoken. That's that's a that's a cool little hook. I'm getting a bit pedantic with these lines. So what do we think of this gate? Is it does it have enough detail? Maybe we can continue this line up through here. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. We could also just forego these outside bits and just have 
a rather small gate, but have more interesting rocky texture around it. Let me let me go with that. Let me try that. So these pillars can go away. It's so nice having people to talk to about D and D ideas, because my brother, I love talking to him, but then I have to hold back on all the ideas which I may end up using in the game that he plays that I run, and he has the same issue with me. So it's nice just to just to be able to vent all these ideas out. Not worry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do like the geometric rune idea. So maybe like um I also I like the idea of having a teleportation circle somewhere on this platform so that um so that majors can come and go. So maybe I'm thinking put a little shape in here. And then in here we'll have our our rune. Quite like that rune. It's very different to this rune. But it's cool. I have to keep my runes very simple just because of the scale I'll be drawing at. And then something like Looks a little bit too much like an arrow. This one. And these are magically charged runes which which power the teleportation circle. Right. So um we'll have them mostly the same, but also unique. So this this will be the common element. Then this one instead will be like this. So it's still symmetrical, but different. And then we have the pedestal and whatever powers these runes goes in here. Vague General MacGuffin thing. Just want to get an intelligent shape here. <clears throat> and you know what? I want to put this on a, a platform raised platform these are some steps that lead up Might undo this, it's getting a little bit technical, but we'll see. Just like a little raised platform for our pedestal. And that's a step. It's also sort of If we put these pedestals in, does it interrupt too much of general icicle shape? My question. You know what? I quite like them, but they might not be raised platforms, but they will be kind of a highlight. And then we're going to borrow their distinct color for our edging, our cobblestone edging. Not, not cobblestone, uh, just the pavement that goes around the edge. It goes blop, like this all the way around the edge. That's what we'll do. 
I'm not going to draft it in since that would be a needless waste of time. I'll just draw it when it comes time to draw it. Good night, Ken. Thanks for tuning in. I hope I didn't miss you before you left. Probably did. I haven't been looking up at Twitch chat enough. So here we need to... work on our vertical lines in a way that the gate still makes sense. Kind of like we could see an opportunity for a, a trio of shapes here. And trios are a nice little artistic element mix in. So we've got three distinct rocks here and this guy needs to jut out. We're just going to destroy this corner which we've created a little bit like that. Now we got a distinct trio of stones which I like a lot. That looks good. This will be basically left alone. I like our little water tribe symbol up here, but I think it's a bit superfluous now. So we're gonna forget that it was there. I feel bad erasing it since it just looks so perfect, but we've got enough here. We've got enough uh, runic jargon here, and this is gonna be like uncut rock so so I'm trying to get something that uh, looks natural and like it has enough volume behind it to house this gate And I can also choose now, while I have the luxury of the eraser, where our general rock shape is going to go. Just sparingly, we're not going to cover the entire cliff side with rocks. But we're going to have enough rocks that the imagination can has an easy time filling in the rest. Oh, hey, the Roman Kilt, thanks for coming and saying hi before racing off to work. Yeah. Oh, thanks for saying so, Andy. Uh, have a good night. Okay, having like a vaguely natural arc here kind of makes sense. Like that. Like if we were going to pick a spot in our cliffside to build a gate, you'd, you'd go for this, this area, I think. That makes sense. It would just make more sense if it was back further, perhaps. This little cranny is filled up with snow. I think these are big loose boulders that aren't necessarily attached to the cliff, but just leaning against it. is where everybody learns 
how much of an amateur I am with rocky formations. Pretty much just keep trying stuff until something works. Just how I draw a lot of things. We found that out when we were drawing tokens, didn't we? Yeah, I think this is the time when everyone in America is heading to bed, but thanks for stopping by the Red Wizard, the Wizard Red. Sorry to put your name like that. And then these vertical slashes are also a good shorthand for rock face. That's Pretty much how I draw rocks is a whole bunch of shorthand. Um, like my most popular video on YouTube is my cliff cliffside how to draw video. So um, I'm sure many of you have seen my method to drawing rocks, and it's it's very simplistic. Um, every now and then I I do go on a little spree where I look up a bunch of reference images and study rock faces and so occasionally my rock face method will evolve but it's still very primitive I think what we need here is a big old rock kind of leaning on top of the gate let me try this in fact, if we just get rid of that shape, we kind of accomplish the same thing. Then we just need some more distinct body to it. Coming out this way. And that, that looks like a suitable rock to tunnel into, right? Could even... What would be even better than tunneling into a rock would be finding a naturally formed cave and then just kind of plugging it up with a gate. I think that's what has happened here. So I, I'm going to go back and try and create our leaning rock. A great stone leaning up here. Oh, okay. I get ya. I should get a widget or something for OBS that tells me what time it is around the globe so that I can um, tell when my American viewers are up late or I can intelligently say good morning, good night, that sort of thing. Okay, so this this shape, this uh, this gate is beginning to make more sense now, as we figure out how it actually attaches to the mountainside. If you do too many of these shorthand swipes, it starts to look like a woody texture. But if we are smart about it, it'll, it'll work. I think here's a big rock that's kind of fallen in the other direction, away from the general grain of the rock. And then up here might be a bunch of rubble, maybe another rock. 
How are we looking? Does this make sense as a cave entrance? As a dungeon entrance? <clears throat> Not so much with this, this junk on top, does it? That looks like a collapsed dungeon entrance. So we need just rock up here, just rock face. So I think a shorthand swipe will do the trick. Maybe. Maybe if we just remove all of our lines going against the grain, it will make more sense. I should look up that Dragonstone cave that exists in real life. That's got the same sort of diagonal style to it. Let me do that. Dragonstone cave. It's a bunch of interior shots. Okay, it's not quite what I imagined, but I remembered. Okay, well, I, I've seen something that we can use here. We have a rocky base. goes up like this and then kind of the underside will be a shape that envelops this cave entrance. Like so, so we've got a distinct shape to this rock. Lost our triangle in the in all this, haven't we? We can revive that and uh, not make it look strange. Okay. Well, you must all be getting pretty bored of me fussing around with this gate. Plus, we're just about done. Plus, I'm hungry for my lunch, so I'm gonna call the stream here, and I will be back later if you're all awake still to draw this thing otherwise you can catch the replay but uh here is our icy temple map the draft with some you know the fun elements the fun kind of challenging elements for your players being climbing the platform on these narrow staircases plus uh traversing this chasm if should they need to. And then up here, maybe a puzzle with the runes or oh, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the little altar slash MacGuffin bowl. Uh, and in my mind, all while some kind of magician stands up here on the top, on the high ground and rains down ice shards or something like that. So I think we got a, a fun little map here. Got a lot of elevation to it. A lot of, oops, got a lot of elevation and kind of narrow pathways, a good mix of elements. And I'm gonna fix up this gate. How did that happen, Ross? And then I'm gonna print it out, set up my streaming, my kind of overhead hand cam streaming thing and then i'll be back in an hour or two so just look out for that notification please do hit the follow button slash subscribe button if you want to tune in and you'll be notified when i come back but we've done a good job today guys thanks everyone for your help and your input and your ideas um this wouldn't be an icy lake without you covered in interesting runes 
So yeah, it, it's been a successful little drafting session, which has taken much too long, but mission accomplished. Uh, let me check Twitch chat one more time. Oh, thanks, Roman Kilt. I'm going to copy paste those names into a little list I have because I, I do want some better music and soundscapes. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Okomi Goddess, thanks for tuning in. Have a good shift. And thanks, everyone. And see you next time. Bye bye.